Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another a special edition of the show. Six years. So this week marks six years of Elite Wine TV. Um, you know, I think I know the date by now. Uh, I believe it's May 28th. Bum, bum, bum. Ding, ding, ding. May 28th, 2009. So six years of, uh, Really only five years of reviewing wine because I did take a year off. But six years ago, I started this, a madman with a flip cam, as I say sometimes, um, decided to jump into the fray of, yeah, I could do video wine reviews just like everybody else. Um, and now six years later, there's only a few people that from then that are still doing it, like a couple people. And there's some new players and some people have come and gone. Um, so this is not uh, the easiest or most popular way to review wine. Um, there's tons of people out there writing about wine, uh, taking pictures about wine, um, but there aren't a lot of people like me uh, and James and a few other people out there that are consumers um, that are not, you know, wine shop people or backed, you know, with uh, backed with some big money or make like little five minute videos, you know. And nothing wrong with those because those are hitting us uh, those are fulfilling a need in, in, in a different type of marketplace but as far as what we do um, not too many people left doing that so um, so I thought I would just kind of have a nice little celebratory episode review a wine I've never had before um, and go from there uh, I left the receipt in the kitchen but I already know how much it is let's um, Let's get into the wine first and then we'll do some shout outs. Okay, so this is the non-vintage Schramsberg uh, Mirabelle. Now, the story about this wine, yes, the usual reviewing the wine in the regular glass. All right, so um, story about this wine. Uh, this is a non-vintage wine. Um, Schramsberg, first of all, is, and I, I, we've, I've reviewed some Schramsberg in the past, so I don't have to really go through the whole whole story with them. But um, uh, Schramsberg is probably one of the most, is probably one of the best uh, American sparkling wine makers out there. Um, it's a personal favorite. I love the Blanc de Blanc. So I didn't, I didn't do the Blanc de Blanc, even though it's vintage and I probably haven't had, well, I probably had the, the, the current vintage. Um, this is not vintage. I've never had the Mirabelle to stay in like cont or not in line or whatever to stay with my usual have a wine I've never had before uh, it's getting harder and harder now that I'm in in the part of the industry where I do taste a lot of wine um, just as far part of my job uh, it, it sucks because anytime that comes up in conversation that I do this I sometimes I go ooh and I'm kind of like yeah but I don't review wines I've already had so um so it makes it a little difficult on that, but then I also don't, I don't pitch these guys when they're pitching me to give me wine for the show. Anyway, um, so Mirabelle is a multi vintage Brut Sparkling Wine, uh, principally comprised of Chardonnay, and um, typically f the older base wine lots typically uh, do 20%, I think this one said 15% on here. Oh, it's just as a minimum of 15% aged reserve uh, wine. And it is made from Chardonnay and Pinot Noir grapes, but it is a primarily a Chardonnay uh, sparkling wine. And then uh, they get their um, they get their grapes from uh, Carneros, Anderson Valley, and the Sonoma and Marin coastal areas in Northern California. The, the cool areas of I mean Carneros is generally cool, but the cooler areas of Carneros and Anderson Valley. Um, 
and this is just to mimic what you need, you know, the, the type of growing that you get in Champagne uh, in those types of areas where they are a cooler climate. They don't get super, super hot. You know, I thought it was a little bit dark in there, but you know, maybe I'll just adjust it. So obviously I'm a little relaxed. We're on the couch, I'm not set up with the green screen or anything. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little cut here because I want you to watch the intro to the first episode. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark V. Fusco. And this, my friends, is The Leet Show, AKA the internet's most elite wine program. Yeah, I just did a Gary Vaynerchuk. But you know, he's the inspiration for all this. Um, and this, guys, this is the inspiration for Leet Wine. When, uh, when I saw this wine at World Market, I don't know if I can really get this done right, but I saw it kind of at an angle. Now, those of you that are geeks like me know that 1337 spells Leet in Leet speak. You know, the 1 is the L, the 3s are the E's, and the 7 is the T. So, this is going to... Okay, so... There was a cut somewhere. <laughs> so obviously we're in the same shirt. Um, I don't, I didn't have glasses on at the time. Maybe I did. Um, no, I don't think I had my glasses on at the time. These are new, new, new uh, glasses. So um, I've gone from that to this, and you know, I'm, granted, I didn't get all techy, tech, techy with the green screen. I don't even have the 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 lights. I just kind of went low tech and just gonna be relaxed. I mean, I got my exposure and white balance done, and if I need to brighten it up, I will. In fix it in the mix, so to speak. Anyway, so Mirabelle paid $20.99 for it. Um, so reasonably priced sparkling wine. Uh, their other sparkling wines are a little bit more expensive. They're closer to 30 bucks retail. Um, but I wanted something that was not, not super, super expensive, um, but I didn't want like, you know, $10 Corbel or whatever Corbel sells for. Um, I want something I knew a good producer and, 20, and around 20 bucks. So if you're looking to have something like, like sparkling wine to, whether it's a celebration, because you don't always have to do it for celebration, but it's kind of nice to celebrate with a little sparkler. Or if you're looking to just enjoy some sparkling wine with some dinner, or just to kind of chill a little bit. Today is not too hot to, here in Texas. Um, the last I looked, it was 77 degrees out and cloudy. And it's been raining for like three weeks straight. Um, now I'm recording this on Thursday, the 21st. So um, when you see this, it'll be, you know, Memorial Day or that week. Uh, anyway, let's get into the wine. So it's, it's got a golden color, but, it, and I know I don't have, the, I got some white here. It's also almost kind of copper. So it's got a little bit of, copper tinge, a little bit of red tinge that could be from skin contact with the Pinot Noir, but it's not, it's not like, it, it actually kind of looks almost, almost like this, but, but more copper. So, um, kind of nice little color there. Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to really swirl sparkling wine. Interesting. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna coat the glass because I'm not really sure if that's the glass or the wine. A little prime action. Oops, a little spillage. Because there's there's an unusual smell to it. And it doesn't smell like cleaning or chemical. You know, so it's not like the soap that I used to, to clean the glass, but. something kind of meaty, bacony to it. I am swirling it out of habit. Sourdough, very sourdough, almost, almost like um, beer, like that, that sour type of mash, the sour wort, very much like that. Yeah. More bread, more bread oriented than, than anything else. Now 
no spit bucket. Now I did throw this in the fridge for about 30 minutes and it didn't feel very cold. And I threw it in the freezer for about 15, maybe 20. So it's cool, but it's not cold, cold like you would normally get from a restaurant. So probably should be a little bit colder than it is for ideal drinking. And I'm probably gonna put a little cap on there a little bit and throw it back into uh, the refrigerator to drink a little bit later. It's real crisp. Um, I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of fizz out of this. Um, I mean, it's there. There's a little bit of prickliness, but it's not a lot. Again, it could be just because it's a little bit warmer than you probably should serve it. But it had a lot. I mean, it it made it made a nice little pop when it pulled the cork. So definitely, you know, it was definitely the, the CO 2s in there. Uh, it's definitely carbonated, but you don't really notice it. I mean, when I poured it, you saw it. And let's let's just kind of. Let's get that second glass in there. See, there's the fizz. There's the bubbles. So one of the things about these glasses is that they don't really retain the bubbles very well. There is something else kind of weird on the nose. I mean, I hate to say it, but it smells like wet dog, which is usually a, a is usually um, not good. But it tastes fine, so it's not a corked wine. But it's that sour dough, but there is a mustiness to it. And I haven't had a dog in a long time, but you do remember what that smells like, so. A little bit of apple to it. It's it's not corked. It tastes fine. It's just that this unusual smell. Maybe if I chill it a little bit later, it'll be better. But it's got a little bit of baked baked goods, a little apple. So kind of like an apple pie, but not um, kind of green apple, Granny Smith um, type of really almost like Jolly Rancher green apple. all kinds of fizz now. I just let it sit in the glass for too long so the carbonation left. Um, it's tasty. I mean, is it as good as their Blanc de Blancs? I don't think so. Um, it's still good. For $20, it's worth it. Um, it's probably better at $15. Um, but you're not going to be, you're not going to be like disappointed in it. You're not going to be like going, oh, this is horrible, horrible sparkling wine for 20, bu 20 bucks, especially when you're looking at what you're going to get for less than that and the quality that of that sparkling wine is going to be not as good um you know it's, it's good i'm going to enjoy this the rest of the day so the wet dog is kind of going away and it's still back to that sour that sourdough or or you know like brewer you know brewed you know beer brewing the wort and all that It's good for twenty bucks. You're, you're not gonna you're not gonna be disappointed in it. Now I have to give myself a nice glass of it, and uh, I'm just gonna chill and and we're gonna few shout outs. So, you know, six years ago we start, we I started this um, as a video diary of my studies for the level one sommelier. I made that. Then uh, once I became a level one, I, I, I it's not that I kind of said what's next because during that time I wasn't recording the show, um, but I, I wanted to, once I hit the level one, I really wanted to, to get into going to level two and I really wanted to come back with the show. And you know, after I had taken the year off, you know, I had to decide whether I wanted to do it again and resume it. And I felt that I had enough viewers um, that, that watched it on a regular basis that 
I want, I didn't want to just kind of disappear and let people down. That's why I try to stay very active and especially during that time on Twitter and Facebook and try to interact with people so that the brand was still there. Um, and then once I resumed, um, you know, things really took off. Uh, this past few months, uh, the biggest challenge I've had is TiVo changed their, uh, changed how you can view web videos and, uh, long story short, my subscriptions have completely nosedived because they didn't retain the old subscribers with the new uh, web video stuff. So uh, viewership has gone down tremendously um, because that is the majority of my viewers. I don't know why, I don't know how. Um, now I also get quite a few views. The next level, next most views is on Roku. Uh, on iFood.tv's iWine app on the Roku box. Um, so, and, uh, and it's me and uh, Monique, uh, Wino TV, and I think we're the only two that are like, like non-winery people. And I think there's, uh, I think Jordan maybe has theirs on there too, so Jordan Winery. Um, so there's a couple of people out there doing video on Roku. And, um, uh, Maybe Jessica Alteri, I think, I think hers is also on Roku. Uh, so they, they may be on Roku, but so that's the next, that's the next most views. And then after that, it's YouTube and iTunes and just what random website visits and just random somehow somebody loaded on the podcast app or whatever. But, um, so it's a little disappointing that my viewership has gone down because of a, of a change in the, the most popular way for people to watch it. And, uh, Hopefully, some of those people will have caught wind through watching me on YouTube or somewhere else that they can still watch me on TiVo. Uh, and also, I mean, one of my big TiVo fans, watchers, uh, viewers, um, his TiVo box no longer can do, can't do the app uh, because it's only restricted to the, to the, not the, no, not the newest necessarily, but the last couple generations of TiVo boxes. So if you have an older TiVo box, you can't watch it. You, not, at least not through the web, web hot list app. You can still access YouTube on TiVo. You can watch my stuff that way. So you can subscribe to TiVo that way or subscribe to the show through TiVo on YouTube. If that's how you want to do it, you can still do it. Speaking of that, you can, if you have YouTube, you can do it on Roku. You can do it on I, uh, Apple TV. You can do it on smart TVs. They all have YouTube apps. So if you want to watch me on YouTube, that's the, every episode goes on YouTube also. So, um, other than that, some, uh, some thanks to some people along the way. First of all, the parents, um, and my dad now, um, been a few supporters, you know, put up with, put up with me and, and my eccentricities with, with, how I want to do things and lots of, especially early on, lots of discussions on how I should do the show and this, that, and the other. And, you know, some of them were a little bit uh, spirited, uh, nothing bad. Like we didn't even drag down arguments, but you know, giving, giving advice and whether I took it or not, um, always trying to explain myself if I didn't, if I didn't think it was good advice. Um, but they've been great and a lot of friends. So friends here in San Antonio, um, you know, uh, uh, Ceci uh, Bretto, uh, who I got to hang out with last night, um, doing one of her many little projects, uh, doing some uh, wine stuff at this uh, little uh, restaurant called Folk in Almost Park, a uh, little wine pairing thing, also with uh, Jennifer Beckman um, with Coolman Cellars, which stellar Texas wines, 100% Texas juice. I've had the wines before. Um, this is one of those wineries in Texas that I hope to visit and do an interview with someday. Um, there's a few others out there that I want to want to do. So sometime this year, I'm probably going to make another little Texas trip to, uh, to try to get some, uh, interviews, but, um, some amazing wine got to meet a couple people that, uh, are in the wine industry distributors. Also, they had some really nice, uh, Riojas, um, tasted two of them. One was really entry level and the other one was like still very reasonable price and the little bit more expensive one is the one I preferred um, but the other one was the entry level was really drinkable and priced very aggressively um, so when you go into a restaurant I don't they're not really looking to do uh, retail from what I can tell they're brand new distributors 
uh, but they but they've been going to Spain for a long time and learning the wine and all that. So they were really cool people to meet and uh, met one of the cooks at Folk. We hung out with one of Ceci's friends who I've met a few other times. Then we went next door to um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, not the spot. Um, uh, Park Social. Park Social. A little bar almost literally, that's literally next door. Hung out there for a little bit and had some drinks and we, we got all crazy with uh, we got all crazy with uh, um what should we call it? Uh, doing a little Bohemian Rhapsody on video. No, I'm not posting it. If you're my friend on Facebook, my personal Facebook page, you can see it. But I didn't post it because it was a little, I don't know, a little crazy. Not too crazy. But anyway, we had a lot of fun. Uh, so Ceci, uh, been a big supporter. You know, we met because we were the first, you know, basically the only two wine bloggers in San Antonio at the time. Um, so uh, she's been she's been great. She's been on the show. Matter of fact, she's usually when she's usually when she's usually on the show, it's one of the most watched episodes. So need to have her on the show more. I told her that last night. Um, I've told that before too. Uh, so sesti has been great. Um, Jennifer, uh, who I mentioned, she's been great. Uh, she was with uh, Bending Branch before. Now she's with Coleman. Uh, Perton Alice people, um, Julie, uh, Frederick, and and um, uh, Dave are are wonderful. Uh, they've been very supportive of me as far as Texas. Uh, also, another shout out to uh, the Bonarigos of Messina Hoff. You know, Messina Hoff makes all kinds of wine. They make entry level, you know, really inexpensive wine uh, for people that just want a bottle of wine and they're not worried about how fancy it is, all the way to much higher end wines. And we're not talking crazy $200 bottles of wine, though I know someone that has one in Texas. Um, and that was. It was good wine too, but still 200 bucks. Um, and we'll, with Texas, we'll eventually get there, but I think we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves on that. Um, but uh, anyway, so they've been really supportive of me. Uh, awesome people, great for the Texas wine industry. I know they have some wines that are for sale in Texas only, and that's a big sore point with a lot of Texas wine bloggers and a lot of Texas people. But the reality is for, for, for wineries like them, that's their business model, and it, it is what it is, but they have plenty of 100% Texas juice wines. So, um, so they're kind of, you know, opposite ends, you know, with, with some of the smaller wineries. Um, Vinny Lupo, a new friend of mine, well, not really that new anymore, uh, over at Inwood, um, he's been great. Um, Master Psalms out there that I've met and uh, going to Texom. You know, Craig and Devin, uh, new master June, just got her master, uh, just passed her master exam yesterday. Uh, so congratulations, June, June Rodil um, uh, in Austin. So Austin has three masters. So man, they're like all going to Austin. Um, Bill Elsie over in Houston, uh, one of my other former interviewees. Uh, he's been awesome. Um, who else can I, who else can I give a little shout outs to? I mean, uh, Adam Curry, um, Adam Curry. So he is the pod father. Uh, the one, he and Dave Weiner were the two people that effectively invented podcasting. Uh, over the years, he's given me advice on podcasting stuff and help with, with the technical things, uh, related to podcasting. So shout out to you. I don't know. I know you gave me a shout out. Um, actually I think last week or the week before or whatever, but somebody else who's been helpful, John C. Dvorak, also very helpful um, with uh, some wine stuff. He's a he's a technology writer and does you know, he's like a jack of all trades. He's like done everything. <laughs> it's like amazing when you hear what he what he's done in his past as far as you know jobs and knowledge and all that. But he's also a very big wine aficionado and knows his knows knows his French wines. Um, he's been help he's been helpful in the past. Um, you know, let's see, it's just I, I, all the wineries I've visited. You know, whether they're the Texas wineries, you know, the wineries in France, uh, the wineries in, in Napa that I went to, you know, uh, Christian over at Palmaz, you know, just spending so much time with me. I mean, not, not, not that the other wineries didn't spend a lot of time. They, they all spent about two hours with me, but Christian was with me for like, a, like four hours, probably almost five. You know, we got into dinner time, you know, and the wife's like going, hey, it's time for dinner. Um, so, I mean, he, the, just the, the amount of time that he spent with me uh, and all the other people out there in Napa, you know, spending that two to th two, two and a half hours um, 
give me tours of their tours of their wineries and the going into the vineyards, going to Benziger and going into all the vineyards and looking at how the biodynamic uh, eco, ecosystem works with them um, and getting getting a really in depth knowledge of not to say first well firsthand, but you know more than just standing in a tasting room being told, oh, we do biodynamic farming and, and that's it. Um, so uh, going to uh, Jerome, Arizona. <laughs> And I know I didn't get to uh, interview Maynard, but you know what? Um, that's okay. It was uh, some good wine, had a great time, got to see beautiful country. And that's one of the things about with this wine thing. If you visit these places and you travel, you're going to see some amazing places around the world. Um, but uh, I'm, I know I'm forgetting a whole bunch of people. You know, I haven't named specifically. Um, but uh, oh, the, the people at Pressable. My, my web hosting company, uh, Vid, you know, who owns it, uh, Christian and Robert, who I call friends. I call Vid a friend too, but I, I hang out with Christian and Robert more. Um, Kai, I haven't met Kai, but he and I, he's helped me quite a bit when there's any, any little technical issues. I mean, I couldn't do this the way it is now. I couldn't have my podcast on iTunes the way I have it now if these guys hadn't come through for me and say, hey, you know you know you can host the videos for free on the website. That's your part of your package, standard package for everybody. So it's not just me. It's not like I had a sweetheart deal. Bandwidth, I don't have to worry about bandwidth. It's all about page views. Um, so if you need to do something like this, you need to host video, whether it's a wine video or whatever you want to do, um, or music, you're gonna, you, want, you need servers to, to host your actual music files or whatever, audio podcasting. Check them out. Um, I mean, I pay 25 bucks a month for 15,000 views for five websites, and I'm using four of them. So, um, well, only using three, really. But um, so if you, need, if you need a WordPress hosting site, pressable.com, they're great. Uh, I did not get paid to say that. I don't have the little, you know, spit bucket with their name on it, so can't, like, pimp them out. And uh, I was trying to think if it was anyone else that I'm forgetting, you know, the bumper people here, all the business media and PR, you know, we used to be called, uh, uh, I forgot what our original name was, but the lunches we did and meeting all those people here in San Antonio with social media and connecting with them and being able to bounce ideas off them. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's people like that, that, um, really help out. We don't do it anymore. Kind of miss that. You know, we didn't really have that. We don't really have that social media community the same way as it was four, five, six years ago. Um, but those are great people. Um, that's going to be it. There's really not much else to like ramble on about. I just want to thank, ultimately thank all of you for watching. If this is the first episode you've watched or you've watched all 334 of them um, or however, however many in between, um, that means a whole lot. The fact that I have people that view the videos and I don't even know personally. I mean, it's just, yeah, okay, you know, your, your friends, you know, watch the videos. And most of my friends don't, aren't really into wine, so they're not even watching the video. But, you know, I know, I know some people personally watch the video. But, you know, the, the everybody else I don't know firsthand, I appreciate that you, the fact that you're spending half hour, an hour, or whatever of your time once a week, about 30 to 35 times a year to, uh, hear me ramble on about wine. Uh, That's gonna do it. I'm gonna enjoy this glass of sparkling wine. Ooh, I think the, I think the nose just got better. I shouldn't have swirled it. It's about the same. But it's really that sour, sour bread. Um, I'm gonna enjoy this bottle of sparkling wine. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day and my day off, even though it's cloudy and gloomy. Um, rest and get ready to go to New Jersey, uh, which we are leaving on Memorial Day. Uh, so Carl, if you're watching, uh, and I haven't already sent you a direct message on Twitter, I will be in town starting, well, we're not going to be available Tuesday, but we're going to be getting to Jersey on Tuesday, and um, I'll be there until Wednesday, coming home Wednesday. Got to remind my boss about that because he scheduled me to work. Anyway, um, so I'll be up there, um, won't have, I'll have a little bit of time maybe to, if somebody else is up there in Jersey and wants to uh, meet up at some point, I might be able to 
shoot me a, a, a message on Twitter or on Facebook if we're friends, um, either way, and uh, maybe we can hook up. But uh, other than that, folks, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. Uh, half hour show of rambling. Thank you again um, for watching. Uh, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the PayPal button over there to donate some ducats. Pay for that trip to Jersey and pay for the wine. It's 20 bucks. Um, and uh, click the link below for Schramsberg. And uh, we'll save everyone again next time.